As you probably heard by now, 3D printing gives makers some incredible capabilities. From customizable designs, toolless manufacturing, short cycle and test molds, and general prototyping, these represent just a fraction of the applications. To reduce the number of printed prototypes, I can use zebra stripes and curvature maps to interrogate the shape in some detail. But at this point it's fairly well defined, so now I want to hold it. If you've worked with a 3D printer before, you know it's not as easy as hitting file print. Knowing this, Fusion 360 has added direct connections to 3D print utilities and slicers directly available from the Make dropdown. These include Print Studio, Mesh Mixer, Cura, and I can also access things like NetFab and 123D Make using the Custom option. For this video, I'm going to focus on the latter three, but make sure to explore all these options to find the best fit for you and your printer. Cura is an open source 3D print slicing software that has quite a lot of functionality. After sending your file to Cura, you'll want to orient it in the print space. And although Cura will automatically hollow solid parts, you can take other steps to get those prints done even faster, such as adjusting the layer height, fill density, and wall thicknesses. It will add supports automatically and provide previews of the layer by layer toolpaths. Once done, the G code can be exported to the printer and the part produced. Similarly, but with enhanced professional level functionality is NetFab. NetFab can be accessed from the 3D print tool with Infusion, or you can export to a wide array of different 3D files. In this case, we'll save out to an STL from Fusion 360 by right clicking the body, then selecting to save STL. In NetFab, I can add entire assemblies to the job. That is assuming I have enough print area. At first glance, it might not seem possible in this case, but we'll use the automated packing algorithms to ensure we efficiently fill this print space. Then automatically add supports. NetFab will hollow out solid parts, but it can also go a step further. The internals can be strengthened with microstructures to build strong but feather-light parts. And I'm not talking about prototyping anymore. As direct laser metal sintering and other additive metal processes become more feasible, these once impossible to make parts are now possible. Let's switch gears to the simplest of the three, 1-2-3-D Make. While not a true 3D print slicer, this amazing tool can slice models for other construction techniques. It can slice using a layer by layer approach, but also interlocked, curved, radially, and even flat pattern for folding. Once the best method is determined, it can produce true scale, nested, and labeled DXFs for production. Anyway, like I said before, dig around with all the tools to find the one that works best for your equipment and more importantly, your needs. I hope this video helped point you in the right direction.